Before we get started, I wanted to just give um, everybody a really, really brief introduction to, to nurse, what nurse is, in, in case you're not familiar with it, and just set a little context for the day. Um, we call ourselves the Mission um, HBC, or High Performance Computing for, uh, Center for, for the Office of Science in the Department of Energy. And what that means to us is that we have the unique mission of supporting all of the uh, research in the Office of Science that needs some kind of science at scale or that needs some needs computing and data resources that they, they can't get anywhere else. And so that is, that's what we do. And um, if you're not familiar with the Office of Science, the, the, the span of um, science that goes on that is supported by that office is, is very broad. And these are the six areas that the office um, divides itself into. And so we do everything from climate to energy physics to plasma physics and fusion energy um, and that sort of thing. That the one in the upper right is uh, basic, what they call basic energy sciences. And that's actually our biggest contingent of users. And that includes all the materials, science, and the chemistry. And one thing that's interesting about that in, in the context of quantum computing is that, that most, of the, most of the systems that the people are interested in that area are inherently quantum and have a quantum nature uh, themselves. So can you go ahead to the next one? So this is our mission, which is kind of a repeat of, of what I just said. But the, one interesting thing is down at the bottom is the collaboratory science of scale. So we are really looking at solving the big problems. So we're interested in the problems that really push technology and push what's available in HPC. And, and that's really where, where we, um, we stand in the, in the ecosystem of, of computing. Uh, okay, go ahead and go to the next one. Um, just by the numbers, we have a lot of users. We have close to 10,000 users now, and again, getting close to uh, uh, 1,000 institutions around the world from all 50 states and many countries. Uh, if you look at the demographics, it's a little bit interesting, and, and some people may not realize this for a national lab. Uh, most of our users are actually what I call early career scientists, either graduate students or postdocs or undergrads. And most of our users actually sit at universities. So they've received, most of them have received research grants from the Office of Science to do their research, but about 60% are at universities and then uh, most of the rest are at national labs. Okay. And so more by the numbers, um, at the end of the day, what's really, uh, the end result that we're really interested in is, is the fact that we're, that we are acknowledged in over 2,000 referee scientific journal articles per year. So that's really what our focus is, and that's what we're trying to enable. And um, go ahead to the next one. Okay. Oh, well, let me say, go back one, Katie. I said a minute ago, if you look at the word cloud, that's the top science areas uh, for the last, believe it was last year. And energy physics stands out, but if you combine material sciences and chemical sciences, materials and science and chemistry, that this is actually the largest portion of our workload. Okay. So this is kind of a busy slide. Um, we just want to throw it up here to show you the systems and the resources that we do have available to our users. Um, Perlmutter is our new system. It's still in its early pre-production phase, and I think Jay is going to describe uh, a lot more about Perlmutter in just a couple of minutes. And Cori is our system that we are going to retire uh, in the next uh, few months, probably. And what's interesting actually about both these systems is that they were our first systems that are moving the, the broad nurse workload into um, kind of energy efficient computing. So Cori uh, was the first system we ever had that was a single processor performance that was slower than uh, single processor or at least single core performance. And so there's a lot of work that we did with um, the scientists in the Office of Science and their, and their codes to get them ready to use such a system. And then Perlmutter then is the first system that has a large GPU uh, partition that Jay will tell you a lot about it. But this is a transition and, and our users are adopting new technologies and moving to um, things that enable them to be able to compute uh, with more with more power, as it were, more computational power. So, Katie, okay, go ahead to the next one. 
And we really do our, to see ourselves as having leadership in HPC. So moving the Office of Science um, research community to be able to take advantage of next generation technologies, whatever those might happen to be. Um, and just as a reminder, over on the right, that's the, a plot of the, uh, uh, the, the radians or the, 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 the actually uh, flops that were able to be achieved on the top 500 systems over the years. So if you look back for about the last 35 years, you see this exponential uh, growth in capability. And, and so our users and the science community has just come to expect that. And there's a lot of open questions about how do we continue to, to, to extend that curve into the future when we're having lots and lots of uh, technology challenges that we can't just continue to make faster and faster single or and even single chip processors. So one of the things we're looking at a lot, of course, is, is quantum uh, and how that might be an enabler for science going into the future. So I mentioned earlier that we have a lot of uh, material science and chemistry research that's apparently quantum. And we just had the end of our period for making new applications for the for 2023 usage of NERSC. And if you look at just in the essentially the abstract of those proposals, about 30% of them explicitly mention the word quantum. So that gives you some idea about the kind of research that goes on at NERSC. And so we're really looking into, as I said, how can we take enable uh, our user base to be able to take advantage of opportunities that might be provided uh, by a quantum computer or a quantum computation. So what are we doing? We're hiring people like, like Katie and, and Dan who are here. Um, they're engaging in a lot of collaboratory research in, in many spaces uh, in this area. And we're also using our resources to try to support uh, quantum research in, in many different ways. And I think Katie and Dan will talk more about that in a little bit too. So Katie, go ahead to the next slide. So welcome, enjoy the day. And uh, I really want to Give thanks to the, the organizers of today, Katie, Dan, and Neil, and they really were the driving force for this. And it was, it, it provide the inspiration and all the hard work uh, to organize the event too. So thank you. 